Hello there, my fellow noble pilots, and welcome once again to a video about one of the great houses of the Imperial Knights. Today's video is going to be dedicated to another Imperium aligned great house known as House Terran. I know I didn't make a poll for the choice of this one, and I am sorry about it. The reason for that is that after this video, there will be two Imperial aligned great houses and two Mechanicum aligned great houses. And I wanted to provide an equal opportunity choice for when you do get to vote about those. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed for today, shall we? House Terran was founded in the 25th millennium during the early days of the Age of Strife by Maximilian Terran. Early on, the Knights of House Terran fought for the cause of the Great Crusade, to help expand the burgeoning empire known as the Imperium of Man. The Golden Age of the Great Crusade was to be cut short by the supreme act of betrayal known as the Horus Heresy, during which the galaxy was gripped by the most bitter civil war humanity had ever known. As the events of the Horus Heresy neared their tragic conclusion nine years after the fateful betrayal on Istvan Free, Horus was defeated and killed by the Emperor aboard his flagship. The surviving knightly houses with the strength to fight on unanimously joined in a crusade of retribution. Believing the honor of the many to be stained by the treachery of the few, the Imperial Knights hunted down the renegade knights which sided with Horus with extreme prejudice, seeking to redeem their tarnished reputation. Filled with righteous indignation, a combined force of knights of House Terran, House Cadmus, and House Borgias annihilated the turncoats of House Devine as Imperial forces reclaimed the lost Imperial world of Molek. But there were rumors that some of the treacherous knights of House Devine were unaccounted for. Ten millennia after the house's founding, in 239 M35, Suetonius Thucydides Terran took the oath of allegiance to the Emperor of Humanity, and the world became a formal part of the Imperium and the house of the Questor Imperialis. Under his auspices, House Terran often fought alongside the Ultramarines chapter. The night world of Voltoris is a tranquil place, largely covered in glittering emerald seas and dotted with jungle-covered islands. Despite its location being close to both the Tau Empire and the encroaching Tyranid High Fleets, it has remained largely untouched by war for thousands of Terran years. Even its predators, the Carrion Vandal or the bitentacled Croctars, are little actual danger to a knight. This freedom from strife and ceaseless assaults by Zeno's raiders has led to the creation of a society of tedious ceremony and tiresome custom. Under the light of their binary stars, the nobles of House Terran hold endless court, the expectations heaped on young nobles driven many to yearn for the call of battle, where problems can be solved at the end of a reaper chainsword. From the moment he awakens to the moment he returns to his sanctum, a noble of House Terran must observe the ancient traditions of the family. Ancestors must be honored, observances spoken, and rituals performed. To ease the burden on their sons, many families have so-called oathsmen that shadow a noble wherever he goes, standing in for them when they are called upon to make an observance. An Ovesman will perform such tasks as offering a drop of blood to each of the noble's ancestors, opening his palm over barely healed scars, so the noble can keep his own hands unblemished. By this same token, it is not permitted for a noble to finish eating before his guest, and an Ovesman might find himself choking down ale and fermented vandal flesh long after his lord has taken his leave. Ovesmen also suffer punishments, and deliver them in place of their lords, leading to all too common situations where servants play ritualistic castigation upon each other in the name of their masters. Far from being an unwelcome position, being an Ovesman is a proud achievement for the family of one so blessed. To be forced to honor the ancestors of a noble is to touch upon the glory of a knightly house. 
In fact, many oath servants have begun lineages of their own, generations of men and women bound to a single noble family. It is a life of sacrifice lived in the shadow of greatness, but it is the closest most common folk will ever come to the nobility that rule over them. Beneath the tedium of House Terran's reliance on ceremony and ritual is the ancient weight of law, and though many lords chaff under the complications inherent in their daily life, the House does not hesitate in punishing those straying from tradition. It is little wonder that with such a ritualistic culture, the young nobles of Voltoris are drawn to the danger and freedom coming from piloting a night suit into war. Once a noble has completed the ritual of becoming, he will find more and more excuses to be in his night. Regular, air tags, training missions are fundamental to the daily routine, with the Lord likewise finding reason to help his sons to master their nights in the jungles and shallow seas around the capes. Younger brothers can only look on in jealousy, as their older siblings laugh and brag about days crashing through the forest canopy hunting for Vandal, or using derelict void ships as target practice for their cannons. Even Tybalt, ruler of House Terran, still leads detachments in wars against the Imperium's enemies, even though he is over 100 years old. As a result, the keeps of Voltoris are often quiet and empty places, populated by industrious servants and petulant young sons, overseen by jealous wives and daughters. Furion Peak, the main headquarters of House Terran, echoes to the sound of song and revelry, only when Tybalt and his nobles are between campaigns. Then, as quickly as they arrived, the Lord and his warriors will depart, because even a staring contest with a hive tyrant is more enjoyable than life at court. At the end of the 41st millennium, the Tao Empire entered into its third sphere of expansion, and the war across the Damocles Gulf flared once again into terrible life. Voltoris itself came under attack from the Tau commander Shadow Sun. Though the forces arrayed against them were mighty, the Imperium was able to lay a deadly ambush for the Tau, in the shadow of Furion Peak, and the combined might of the Imperial Guard and the Knightly House eventually defeated the Xenos. In the aftermath, the Tau tried to extract as many of their units as possible from Voltoris. The Tau that could not reach the landing zones around the peak were forced to retreat into the jungle or make it for the open ocean in an attempt to find respite from the Imperial Assault. While many of the alien units scattered, Tybalt eventually ran a regiment-sized formation to ground in the so-called Weeping Reefs, the crimson-stained waters becoming a battleground for knights and Tau battlesuits. Though the battle had been won, Voltoris would never again be the same. It was stained by the presence of the alien and their foul ambition, while scores of its favored sons lay dead in the twisted remnants of their night suits. Tybalt vowed revenge against the Tau, as he stood tall over the corpses of their dead, promising much blood to come for this gravest of insults against his house. Many nobles of House Terran spend extended periods away from Voltoris, fighting wars on distant worlds under alien suns. These protracted sojourns into the void can sometimes go beyond what is considered dutiful to the house, and instead stray close to the path of the free blade. More than one noble became lost in the duty of his quest, his single-minded devotion to pursuing a foe or honoring a vow taking him far into the wilds of the Imperium. Secretly, though, they just never ever want to return home. Patriarch Tybalt accepts that sometimes a knight's journey will take him beyond the battlefields and banners of House Terran and to a place where he must forge his own destiny. This was the case with the so called Honorable Company. The company was a detachment of five knights fighting alongside the Forlorn Crusade in the southern wilds of the Eastern Fringe that chose the path of the free blade to complete an honored debt for a fallen brother. The crusade had been fighting for centuries to reclaim the Storlar sector from Zeno's empires and heretic overseers when the knights of House Terran joined the campaign. 
the Knights did play a vital role in many engagements across the sector, from the destruction of the Orc Scrap Hive on Orbalok 2, to leading the breakthrough of the Imperishable Line during the Battle of Bluefire. It was in the closing days of the War of Ashes, against the Swords of Kargoth Renegade Space Marine Warband, that the Knights would eventually turn Freeblade. The Renegades had been fighting a war of scorched earth against the Imperium, falling back across the Lymean system, burning whole worlds in their wake, and throwing armies of mutants and cultists at the Imperials. Kargoth, the warlord of the warband, had noted the prowess of the knights, and had singled them out for retribution. Kargoth's assassins infiltrated the Imperial camp and murdered one of the nobles of House Terran while he was sleeping in his pavilion, also dissecting his body and laying out the pieces for his brothers to find. Not only was this perceived as a vile act of treachery by the nobles, it was also a horrible insult. For a member of the house to die outside his night suit was to dishonor him in the most fundamental of ways, a slight which could never be ignored. As one, the other nobles vowed to slay Kargoth and destroy his warband at any cost. In the final battle of the war, the company strove to hunt down the renegade space marines, often placing themselves and their allies in great danger. When the Swords of Kargoth did escape from the system, the knights followed, choosing the path of the Freeblade so they could fulfill their vow, and then set off into the void after their hateful quarry. The proud heraldry of House Terran incorporates the rich blue of their oceans, the white of their pure lineage, and the gold of their wealth, both in resources and might. It is believed that when the knightly House of Terran was first established, the nobles chose the sapphire hue of their livery from the beautiful oceans of their world. However, after many thousands of years, microscopic algae found within the seas of Voltoris have gradually reacted with the system's twin suns to turn the waters into an emerald green. Regardless of this phenomenon, the Knights of House Terran continue to bear the cobalt blue of their ancestors. By the 25th millennium, Maximilian Terran, the founder of House Terran, experienced visions of a mysterious white stallion which appeared to warn him of danger. The stallion was incorporated into the original coat of arms of House Terran, which was then a simple blue shield with a white horse's head. It is the preeminent symbol of the house, and embodies the spirit of the dream horse which guided the first Terran nobles when they came to the then frontier world of Voltores. The meaning of the chain around the stallion's neck is not known for sure, though some nobles see it as symbolic of the control and mastery they have over their own destiny. In 776 M30, Lord Brutus Terran led his house in the war against the great Croctar, a mighty creature which had plagued his people for a decade, finally slaying it in the so-called Battle of the Six Swords. The Terran coat of arms was changed to reflect this momentous event, which now included a knight's helmet above the shield, the house's name on a scroll centered below the shield, and six swords and four spears behind the shield representing this famous battle. In 239 M35, Suetonius Thucydides Terran took on the oath of allegiance to the Emperor of Humanity. Without having any formal ties to a forge world of the Adeptus Mechanicus, like the Questor Mechanicus, House Terran's crest is dominated by a pair of stylized wings to acknowledge its allegiance to the Imperium of Man. On one side of the shield, the house emblem of a white stallion's head is proudly emblazoned upon Terran's traditional field of azure blue, and on the other side, an ebon-colored imperial aquila is displayed upon a field of crimson. In this case, this symbolizes House Terran's loyalty to be equally divided between the house and the imperium. And this, my friends has been what I wanted to tell you about the Great Night House of Terran. Are these guys among your favorite knightly factions? Why do you like them more than others? Let us know and discuss in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? 
In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more content. And if you'd like to help my channel stay alive, please go visit my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an amazing day. The Emperor Protects.